let's take a look at the way that this is connected. So there are two battery systems in this. There's two 12 volt lead acid batteries connected in series to make 24 volts. That runs the motors. That switches over here, you can't see it. That's a dead cutoff to the, to the motors. So if something happens, I can slap that button and the motors are disconnected. The Sabertooth 2x25 does not provide or receive any power from this system. So these red wires on these two connections do not connect to the Sabertooth 2x25 providing power. It is just ground and signal that are connected here from the Pix Hawk 4 Mini to the Sabertooth 2x25. Then I've got my Archer GR8 receiver plugged into Pixhawk 4 Mini RC in. I have the Hollybro 915 megahertz 100 milliwatt telemetry radio plugged into the Telem 1 port on the Pixhawk 4 Mini. And then I have the HRTK F9P Rover Lite plugged with the cable that came with it right into the GPS module connector. I bought this from Hollybro, I bought this from Hollybro, and I bought this from Hollybro, including a closer look at the Hollybro PM06 version 2. It's a power distribution board. Why did I use the Pixhawk 4 Mini instead of the Pixhawk 4? I could not figure out how to get these outputs to drive the Sabertooth 2x32 or the 2x25. This Pixhawk 4 has two processors in it, two microcontrollers in it, whereas the Pixhawk 4 Mini only has one microcontroller in it. The second microcontroller that's in the Pixhawk 4 adds all of the additional communications. I spent way too much time trying to figure it out. It was easier to just buy the Pixhawk 4 Mini and it worked right away. It was way easier to get the Pixhawk 4 Mini to work on the Rover with the Rover firmware than it was to use the Pixhawk 4. Why it's designed this way, in this case I used wood because of the ease of rapid prototyping. This pedestal is up and forward like this to get the compasses and everything here away from the big magnets in the motors that sit back here. Okay. So the other thing about this platform is that it's easily removable. I take these screws out, I unplug the saber tooth right here with easily accessible plugs and I can do all of the calibrations by easily taking this and moving it around. That's why it looks the way it looks. I turn on the receiver first. Welcome to OpenTX. I have to clear the errors. Switch warning. All right, I clear the failsafe warnings. I plug in this system. Okay, then I have to hit the switch. Uh, I think that's supposed to be solid red. Okay, that's solid red. Then on here, I go to arm. I get solid blue here, and then I switch to RC manual. 